good evening and a very warm welcome to everyone present in this session my name is vardhan and on behalf of edureka i will be delivering this session and this session is about the difference between the applications which are implementing soa which is service oriented architecture and software applications which are implementing the microservices architecture so without wasting any time let me get started now before we go into details about soa and microservices let's see what is a monolithic application and how that functioned first of all you can think of a monolithic application as a, a container which is basically uh, hosting a number of software components right there can be a number of software components as part of your software application and if they are all hosted together and delivered together then that's called a monolithic application now there are various challenges with any software application which is implementing the monolithic architecture first of all they are not flexible okay monolithic applications they cannot be built using different technologies that's the problem the second challenge is that they are unreliable even if one feature of the system does not work then the entire system will not work the third challenge is that these monolithic applications are not scalable they cannot be easily scaled and even if the application needs to be updated then the complete system has to be rebuilt the next problem is that uh, with these monolithic applications they block continuous development all the features cannot be built and deployed at the same time they will have to be done separately the next challenge with monolithic applications is that uh, the development is very slow they take a lot of time to be built since each and every time uh, every feature has to be built one after the other and uh, most of all the monolithic applications are not fit for complex architecture because of course you cannot use different technologies you are very limited and very constrained right so that is the challenge with monolithic applications so now let's go on to soa which is nothing but service oriented architecture now with soa these services or features they are broken down right the entire software application is not built as one but the different features and uh, the different services are broken down into smaller components right so that's why it's called coarse grained architecture and over here if we have uh, let's say one software application inside uh, which it provides and if it provides like five uh, features or four features then all those uh, four features are delivered by four different services and uh, that is what you can see over here right there are four different services and each of these services would have multiple tasks inside them and these smaller tasks are together delivered as one particular feature and the whole software application comprises of a number of these features but with microservices it's a little more different now these features or services are further broken down into task level services so here it was feature level services whereas the services here they are task level each and every task in a particular uh, feature that was broken down and that's why you have multiple tasks and multiple services in a microservice architecture and that is why this is called fine grained architecture so that is what the differences are between these three on a high level now before i go further and confuse you people let me just go into more details about the differences between soa and microservices you can think of the difference between soa and microservices with the help of these images so soa is like an orchestra similar to you having multiple performers you will have multiple services but each of these performers will be controlled by one particular director and similarly in soa even though you have multiple services these services will be interacting with one another and then they will be delivered as one particular software application but whereas in case of a microservice there are multiple or uh, let's say there are independent performers but these independent performers are not controlled by any director so they work separately and uh, they work in silos so that is the difference so i hope you can understand the difference between the two from these images right even though they work together they are controlled by one particular director and that's why this is called a centrally governed architecture and whereas microservices you do not have a centrally governed architecture and that's why it's called a decentralized governing architecture so let me go forward and talk about the difference between these two which is nothing but microservice and soa with respect to certain parameters let's look at the difference between them with respect to architecture and coordination so first of all in soa there are four different types of services first is business service the next is enterprise service then we have application service and then we have infrastructure service so these four service types together form your soa and they together deliver your software application now what are these different services and what do they do let's see that first is business service right so 
your business service is the one that's going to be performing your core business operations and it can be either represented by uh, XML or by web service definition language and then we have enterprise service the enterprise service is uh, that service which implements the functionality defined by your business service and the enterprise service does it with the help of the application service and the infrastructure service now moving on we have application service the application service is the actual core application or the uh, core functionality of that feature and these application services can be either invoked directly or they can be invoked through a user interface and now we have infrastructure service the infrastructure service refers to those non business or those non technical operations such as auditing scaling or security and all these things those are the different services in a soa but in case of microservices architecture you do not have these many types of services you just have a functional service and you have an infrastructure service the functional service is basically the combination of a business service an enterprise service and an application service now a functional service is a fine-grained service so basically if your uh, business logic or your business operations requires a particular feature to work then the task that is related to exactly that particular feature that is performed by the functional service and besides the functional service we have an infrastructure service and the infrastructure service over here is very similar to the infrastructure service that is there in SOA the uh, it does all the non business or the non technical operations such as your security auditing and logging okay so that is the difference with respect to architecture and coordination so now moving on to the next slide we have heterogeneous interoperability now what this means is any software application need not be developed on the same programming language now in your main software application you might have smaller applications right and each of those smaller applications could be written uh, on java or it could be written on uh, c uh, dot dot net or it could be written on c sharp or python or anything now when it's written in different programming languages it's tough for them to interact with one another and if you want the different services to communicate with one another then you would have to bring a particular platform right so that's where you have this messaging middleware so in case of soa there is something called as a messaging middleware which acts as the communication point or the interaction point between the different applications which are in a different language so you can see that uh, this application is uh, on either c sharp or dot net and this is on elastic java beans right so normally here it's c plus plus and here it's java so and all of these communications they go to this one particular messaging middleware but in case of microservices we do not have any broker here the communication happens directly between application to application even if they are in different uh, programming languages even if they are structurally different and even if they are built in different grounds so look at this if you have a c sharp or a dotnet application which is communicating with a java application but then how does it happen it happens with the help of a rest api there is a direct communication between these two services and similarly if you have another uh, java application which wants to communicate with another java application the communication would take place with the help of rest api and similarly java to c sharp or dotnet would again take place with the help of a rest api so there is no broker here or middleman which is uh, a messaging middleware the communication is directly to the other application then comes service granularity if you can remember i uh, earlier told that in microservices you do not have the uh, software delivered as a whole right it is broken down into smaller features and if you are basically performing an operation which involves multiple applications or multiple services then those services are called by one another when it's needed so as an end user as a consumer you might be performing one operation okay so that one operation would not be calling all the different services it would call one service and this service when it needs to interact with the second service this would make the call to service two and similarly your service two when needed it would call service number three and similarly the once the service request is made the service response is also given to the one that's invoking the request now the catch here is each and every service request and service response takes 100 milliseconds okay so let's assume it takes this much time the api calls and this is in case of microservices so in the microservice architecture when each call takes 100 milliseconds in total for this service to get uh, successfully returned it would take 600 milliseconds now that's an awful lot of time for an api call to complete successfully right for an api call to be made successfully and to be returned and this is where it is different from an soa so in case of an soa the service consumer would again be calling would be would be performing one particular operation 
and uh, what happens here is this operation would be calling the different services all at the same time so the operation over here would be calling the service number one service number two and service number three which should be encompassed all together so one particular call would be made to the uh, service and all three would be service at the same time and by this you would be saving time because uh, all the three requests and responses would be made simultaneously so you would be saving a good 400 milliseconds over here so that is the difference in service granularity between soa and microservices so the next difference we are going to see is with respect to component sharing this is very similar to the previous slide again right because then it would be the same order service which would be interacting with your different smaller applications each for customer management and for warehouse management and for order fulfillment and the data again would be stored in different databases but there again is the difference in microservices because in the microservices architecture for each and every application so for customer management we have a separate order service and that order service would be accessing its own database for warehouse management you have a separate order service which would be accessing a different database and then for order fulfillment which is again a different application this would be using a different order service and this order service would be using a different database from where it would be accessing data right so that's how there's a difference in even component sharing between these two architectures and then we have the next difference between them and that is the middleware versus api layer this we also spoke about earlier right your soa uses middleware for communication and your microservices uses an api layer for communication so that is about the differences between soa and microservices now let's go ahead and uh, look at the differences between the two by understanding with an example of a shopping cart so every e-commerce portal will have a shopping cart right uh, where you can add your products to the cart and then you can check out later so for adding an item for removing an item for uh, checking what is the tax for checking the total bill amount for all those uh, things you have a shopping cart application and then finally we have another application which is the main application uh, which gives details about the product so it will give us details about the product name what is the product uh, id what is the product uh, rate uh, how many quantities are present and all different uh, other options right what color the product is and all these things now these are three different applications and when they work together you get the complete software application right now each of these applications would have smaller tasks a shopping cart application like i told you before it would have uh, an add or remove uh, functionality where you can add a product to your cart you can remove a product from your cart you can check what is the bill in your cart you can check out what is the tax that is there and all these things similarly if you talk about a product catalog you have uh, other tasks right so all these tasks together form one particular application service in case of a SOA shopping application but in case of microservices shopping application each of the different tasks that these services provide those tasks are broken down into smaller fine-grained services so here we have feature level services where shopping cart is one feature product catalog is one feature and user account application is one more feature but in case of microservices we have a separate billing service for shipping we have a shipping options service we have a tax calculation service right so the different tasks in this particular feature it's broken down similarly for product catalog application we have different task level breakdown such as display product service we have an update display service we have user default service and many more similar for user account application right we have a send email service and many more now that you've understood that microservices is all about breaking a particular uh, feature or a feature level service into task level uh, services so let's see how microservices shopping application is uh, different so first let's take the case of where a microservice shopping application is better so here we'll have uh, certain features which are common to multiple applications right so we have uh, something like a display image server so it's a smaller task level servers over here but the image of the product being displayed might be common across all the three applications it might be present in the shopping cart also and uh, the uh, uh, image of the product might be present in the user account uh, application also with uh, showing uh, which are the products uh, which the uh, particular user bought and then you might have the product uh, you might have the image of the product in the product catalog application also so in this case if there's a change in the image dimensions or in the uh, license of the image or anything with respect to the product's image then the code of course would be similar in all the three applications right the code may be similar but 
the code has to be changed everywhere right and when you change the code when you rework then it causes a lot of problem again now when you change the code here you're changing the functionality and that might cause this particular application to behave abnormally it might have bugs or the application might cause uh, failure and similarly if you change the code over here then even this might throw errors and uh, you might have bugs similarly to this particular application also so if you want to uh, avoid all those things you have to test each of these applications separately after changing the code and after updating the required uh, details and after testing it you will have to deploy each of these applications and uh, you have to deploy them separately now all these things is time consuming right so it is the same change that you're doing across all the different parts of your application but even though you're doing it everywhere even though you're doing something similar you will have to test and deploy each of them and sometimes you might have errors in only one particular application and not everywhere so these are all time consuming tasks but if it's in case of a microservices shopping application you would not have this problem because all the different tasks over here they are provided as a service if you want to change the way the product's image looks then you will have to change only this particular application right so by only changing this service your job will be done you do not have to worry about uh, the other services and you do not have to change anything over there so the main change you will have to be doing will be restricted to only this particular service so you save time and you save effort over here in case of microservices shopping application now this was a use case where the microservices shopping application was better but then there are also times when an SOA shopping application is better for you so this was a classic uh, use case of where a microservice shopping application is a best fit but uh, let's see a use case where an SOA type of a shopping application and uh, the SOA architecture comes out better and that example is uh, when your product is not actually that big so in this case yeah you have a lot of functionalities you have a lot of features and tasks so just consider the example of a very simple software application which needs three primary functionalities one which has like a shopping cart which uh, into where you can add your uh, or you can add your items and then you have another user account application where you will have the user profile and then you'll have a product information application right so over here all these different applications will not have too many sub level features or uh, sub level applications they are very straightforward they are very simple in this case if you are having if you are implementing microservices architecture then you will have to uh, go through a lot of trouble which can simply be avoided because your application is in itself very simple you have to just you know create one one website where you can have one website in which you have a cart wherein you can add your products which you want to buy then when you're checking out you can have the user information displayed and then you have details about the product which is a separate application so in this case it could just be these three different services so that is the difference between an SOA so I think by now you understand that neither of them is better than the other right so there are uh, times when microservices is preferred and there are times when SOA is preferred and you cannot hard code it by saying that uh, one is better than the other so on that note i would like to conclude today's session so guys uh, thank you for being till the very end and happy learning from edureka i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning